Welcome to Creative Excellence. I am your host, Davina Lee, and we are coming to you from the studios of the Government Information Service. This show seeks to give a better understanding of the artist's experience in St. Lucia. We discuss the work, the balance, the successes, and the aspirations. My guest today knows a thing or two about balance. She's a forensic scientist, a beauty queen, a mother, an author, and the creator of customizable interactive cards. At this intersection of science and art, there is joy. A big welcome to my guest, Mrs. Joy Matty Quinlan. Welcome, Joy. Thank you. I'm happy mm -hmm. to be here with you. Okay, we're happy to have you. Joy, the one question, the first question mm -hmm. I ask everybody who comes to this show is, what do you call yourself? Because you're a scientist and you're an artist. So when somebody <laughs> says, Joy, what are you? How do you mm -hmm. respond to that? Ah, joy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thankful for the name my mom gave me. So I think, um, I don't think I necessarily put a label on right. who I am, but if I'm asked what my career is or mm -hmm. what I do, the first thing I say is forensic scientist. Okay. Yes. So you do forensic science and you do art. Yes. So is there this major switch over that must happen when you perform your duties as a forensic scientist and when you perform your duties as an artist, is there this major switch that must happen in your brain? Not at all. I don't think so. So is it not as different science and art as different as people think? I don't think so because I think what I rely on in science is curiosity. And I think the same thing has to happen with art. You have to be curious, you have to want to explore. And I think that is where, I guess that's where the intersection is for me curious the curiosity and being curious about things okay mm -hmm. so we will talk about the art in a while but i want mm -hmm. to talk a little about yourself as a forensic scientist sure. you have a degree in biochemistry yes. and molecular biology right. and you also work in dna analysis right. i mean that is like when you think <laughs> of all of what it is <laughs> a brain so what is that like what is what is that like forensic science and what do you do in as terms a forensic of as a forensic scientist okay so f the, i guess the best way to explain it is um looking at what we do as forensic scientists is looking at evidence that is brought to to us and trying to make a connection between what we see and and if we can connect it to someone um for forensic science and anything science-based again it all goes back to being curious asking questions and being open because as for, especially for science forensic mm -hmm. science you have so much um there's so much banking on you. You need to be s as objective as possible. You right. can't have uh, any bias. And so you, you're not going in trying to pinpoint anyone. That's why you have to be open. Mm -hmm. And so you, you're led by the evidence and you're okay. not led by any, uh, anything else. Okay, yes. because when I watch documentaries mm -hmm. um, of cold cases or I watch, you know, CSI right. and so on, it's always a <laughs> like DNA that gets the guy. Right. It's always some forensic, some forensic evidence mm -hmm. that, that gets the culprit. Mm -hmm. So have we been able to apply those methods in St. Lucia and have we been able to get the guy based on forensic science? Yes, we have. We have several examples, um, but the thing is, it's not very well publicized and mm -hmm. um, that's something I wish we would do there's not a lot of courtroom reporting so a lot of the time the public feels like and I get that question all the time there's a forensic lab you do forensics <laughs> here I'm like yes they, there's a lot of work being done mm -hmm. a lot of people behind the scenes working and working really hard and doing a really good job um, but it's not well publicized so a lot of the times you have, an, I think, some of my best days at work is mm -hmm. hearing something from the police saying, hey, this case is actually completed in court, and yes, we were able to. And I'm like, yes, <laughs> please, you know, for right. me. Um, that fulfillment at the end of mm -hmm. the day, is it, it really does spark joy for me. That, okay. I think that's why I do it. Right. Yeah. Congratulations for that. Thank you. Right. <laughs> so now we're moving on to the other side of mm -hmm. joy. Um, the artist right so you make customizable cards yes. what exactly is that P 
people, just playing with people and mm -hmm. trying to um, see how far I can stretch it, how far I can get mm -hmm. it to, to do something. Um, for me, how I got into it was I've always loved art. I painted before, I drew, um, but I as when I had my, my boys, I all of that time cons trying to balance work mm -hmm. and my children and home and everything, mm -hmm. that be that my art took a back seat and mm -hmm. um, I needed an outlet and I needed to create something. I cannot mm -hmm. be there not doing <laughs> anything right. creative. And that is when I got into um, paper engineering basically okay. playing with people i remember um playing with pop-up cards um not pop-up cards but pop-up books when i was a little girl and loving okay. how you know you th that surprise element is mm -hmm. you know right. really cool and so i had already done work playing with people before but i, mm -hmm. I just never explored it in depth okay. and so i said let me do that because that yes. is so specific I find yeah. this is very specific and you said it's paper engineering yes. so is that part of your science coming in is the math <laughs> that is the thing that's like right why is I'm like not sure I'm not sure there's well the only the math that's in there I guess there is a lot of math because you have to measure precisely mm -hmm. and um, what what's interesting is to um, make thinking of a concept mm -hmm and then trying to make it happen. Right. My most recent card, um, some, uh, not my most, my, one of my most recent cards, someone said to me, I would like a card with a kick. I want right. to open it and I want to, to have a kick. And I'm like, a kick? Because she wanted a karate card for her daughter. <laughs> right. I'm like, hmm, okay, all right, mm -hmm. let, let me see what I could do. Right. And just, I like that part of it, trying to figure out how to right. make it work. Yes. So let's yes. take a look at me. So we have some sure. cards here. And we're going to look at this one I absolutely love. Guys, can you see this one? So I'm going to take up the top. And then it opens up like this. Mm -hmm. And so I guess it was for a wedding? It was a birthday. A birthday yes, because there's the cake you. right yes. here. Mm -hmm. And then there are the photos and it pulls out. There's yes. a card. There's a card within a card within a card. Right. <laughs> this is really amazing. Mm -hmm. I love this one. Let me put it down. Then we have this one, which was created for our very own Homer. <laughs> and we pull it up like this right. it's really amazing so there's so much like I don't know guess is it physics <laughs> <laughs> mathematics <laughs> in this um, this one is what I and like I about stand. that one is that you don't expect all of what's inside right yeah it's like you like oh wow it's just yeah it's like a little step yeah <laughs> all of those. and then we have this one guys so then you just pull it up and you see a rainbow. And you see a rainbow. This is so nice. Yeah, this is the really theme cool. for her birthday this year was rainbow colored, and she nice. wanted to. And then yeah. this one, yes. I guess this one is like a, a photo album. So right. it's like a, it has like a camera, and then you go through, mm -hmm. and then there's photos yeah. and little notes. This is really nice. Mm -hmm. Really, really nice. So tell me, and this one is nice too, very nice. And yeah, that was at Father's Day. Nice. <laughs> very cool. Yeah. Very cool. This looks like a lot of work. Is there a lot of back and forth like, um, okay, this is not popping the way I want it to pop? And <laughs> um, sometimes. Sometimes it does. It takes a bit of um, conceptualizing or drafting. Right. But um, I think that's where the fun is. That and choosing colors and, right. um, you know, design. Yeah. That's where the fun is. So what would spark the idea? Is it just from the persons asking you, from somebody asking you, um, for a card what sparks the idea is it um based on them as a person on what sometimes it's the person sometimes nobody asks for a card and i just sit and I'm like oh i want to make something and, right or i'm sitting there and i'm like what if right. i could make this and then i would go make it but right. a lot of the time if somebody asks for a card i like to know mm -hmm. who the person is that's yes, getting the so card to, it's really personalized yes, so it's really personalized um the colors they like right. uh, what what are their hobbies i've had had a card um somebody asked for a card that was that one just pops up it's just a simple oh, nice. christmas one mm -hmm. somebody asked for a 
a card to incorporate dominoes mm -hmm. and volleyball. Right. And they wanted it in a box. Okay. Something like this. They wanted something like this. And I'm like, dominoes and volleyball. How are you putting those <laughs> two together, right? So right. I'm like, mm, okay. So sitting down and figuring out how mm -hmm. to put those two together, that. That's so take me through the process of that. So from mm -hmm. the beginning, it's like, I want dominoes and a volley volleyball. Volleyball, right. How was the process? So I would go, okay, so you want dominoes and a volleyball. Is there anything specific that you wanted to see? Is there mm -hmm. any colors that you want? So I'd ask that. And I also ask what kind of card. Is it something, mm -hmm. um, how interactive do you want to go with it? And right. if, so for example, with the box, there's several different ways you could go. At first, I wanted to make a matchbox looking card to open and then the box volleyballs would have kind of spilled right. over and then she's like no I really want dominoes involved and then I was sitting I remember this because I was sitting at home and my husband had um, a friend of his over and they were playing dominoes mm -hmm. and I looked at the little table and I'm like ah I know what I'm gonna make right. <laughs> so I looked at the dominoes table right. and you know how it you know how a locally made table yes, is, right? yes. so I literally made the box look like oh, that nice. and so when it opens up I thought of okay volleyball you have the balls you have the net mm -hmm. um, so I created like a little net with the ball smashing the kind of a ball smashing through oh, and wow. so yeah that's how it Okay. Sometimes things spark my in my yeah. like something goes and I go, oh yes, let me. So do like this. you see the table, and you think, right. oh okay, that's an idea. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this show is a lot. There's a deal a lot of balance, right? Right. This is really what the show is about. about. So how do you balance your nine to five, which is very demanding, yes. I can imagine, mm -hmm. with something like this? Yep, so this happens in the miracle morning at right. 2 o'clock or 3 o'clock in the morning when mm -hmm. everybody's asleep and everything is quiet and peaceful. Mm -hmm. um, that's when I go to work. I feel like a little elf that gets up <laughs> <laughs> and then makes the cards. Sometimes, because um, some people don't know what I do, and so they, mm -hmm. they probably figure that this is this is it. Right. They don't know me. And then when I tell them, or somebody's like, can I get a card for tomorrow I'm like, right um, no you can't get the <laughs> tomorrow because it takes you know it takes mm -hmm. time and um, when they realize oh you do mm -hmm. this like a two wow like right. oh wow yeah but it's it's at two in the morning it's amazing yes, at two so is there any way does your art mm -hmm. in any way influence your science work or does your science work influence your art, art. in any way um let's see I think I think they do mm -hmm. because my science work gives me what well, it gave me, especially all the experience that I have in science, gave me, um, a, I think, a well roundedness. Mm -hmm. I think that's what science gives you. And I think any scientist will tell you that. Because you mm -hmm. tend to have to think, especially as a forensic scientist, you have to think outside of the box. Imagine having okay. evidence in front of you. You don't have a lot of information because you don't really want a lot of information, too. Okay. And you have to think like a criminal. You have mm. to think like a scientist. You have to kind of think right. and, and, and think, okay, so if, if this is the case, then I need to look at this. If mm -hmm. this isn't the case, you know? Mm -hmm. So that, for me, that is where science is influencing my art because I am open to questioning everything and mm -hmm. looking at, so if I have an idea I've, I never have one idea. I probably have about five that right. I have to choose from. Right. <laughs> yes. So um, that is what it does for me. And I think my art now influences my work, not necessarily through examining evidence, but mm -hmm. putting systems in place. Because I'm, I also do quality management at the lab. Okay. And thinking through systems and thinking, okay, how does this affect that mm -hmm. um, is is really important and so I think that's where the art okay. influences the work that okay. I do in science yeah a lot of people I talk to well some, even some of the guests that I've mm -hmm. had on this show they're artists mm -hmm. and they have a nine-to-five right. but the nine-to-five is really to support the art mm -hmm. and if it was financially possible they would not be doing the nine to five. Right. They would just be concentrating on, on the arts. art. Right. So for you, what is it? Is it just that you would like to do both? Or is it that if you had a choice yeah. between one? Um, Marie, I don't know if you know who Marie Folio is. Marie mm. Folio is, um, she's this um, internet personality also. Mm. She has her own um, 
business and she's an American, but she uses the term multi-passionate. Okay. And I think that's what I am. Okay. I would not give up my nine to Either five. Either one. No, I would not. I love being a forensic scientist. I've wanted to do this from the time I was 14. That's the one thing I can tell you I knew. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that I knew for sure that I wanted to do. Okay. Yes, but I, I, I don't think I would give it up. Okay, yeah. so at the lab, you deal with quality management. Mm -hmm. You describe yourself as one that's obsessed with quality. Yes. Healthy obsession, <laughs> right? <laughs> How does one ensure quality mm -hmm. in an area like art, which is very subjective? Okay. What would you, what would you think, what can you apply from quality management mm -hmm. in art? And, um, you know, what, can, what do you think you can take? There's a lot you can take. I think quality is, it's part of everyday life. A lot of people probably think of it as just, you know, a product kind mm -hmm. of thing, but it's not. It's, you can apply it to your relationships. You can really apply it to art. For mm -hmm. art, I think, again, it comes back a, a lot of what quality management is about. It's about customer service. So okay. again, listening to who your customer is and not necessarily, um, necessarily where somebody asks you to do something for them, but just think right. of who you're doing it for. Mm -hmm. So let's say you're a painter, you know, really knowing what you're um, painting, what your your niche is. Mm -hmm. And then also having, for, if I can give you an example of, of my work, sometimes I make a card and there's a smudge right. that nobody else will see. But you can see it. I can see it, that card does not go out. Right. No, and there are times when my husband goes, I cannot even see what you're talking about. I'm like, <laughs> and I can see that it's not too straight. I'm like, mm -mm, right, nope, I have to scrap that. Yeah, <laughs> yes. yeah. So those, the, the details, you know, that they say mm -hmm. the devil is in the details, so that's what it is for me. Like, I really need okay. to make sure that what, for me, it's if I would not accept it mm -hmm. or if I wouldn't want it for myself, then I wouldn't right. give it to anybody so else. So when somebody gets a card from you, they're getting your best. Yes. Okay, that's a good one. Yes, good they are thing. getting my best. Okay. Yes. So you're not, you don't just make cards, you're mm -hmm. also an author. Yes. Bilingual children's book. Yes. Tell me about that. <laughs> and, and like what, I mean, like you're not doing enough. <laughs> <laughs> like, wow. Well, it's not published. It's I'm, okay. I'm really hoping to get it published. I'm working on that. Um, but it's it's a love affair of our culture. Okay. I have always loved the Saint Lucian culture. I think that it's not um, highlighted enough. Okay. And so when I was younger, my mom. I remember any time there was no electricity, my mom would tell us Copelape stories. Like, okay all of the crazy things Copia did, right? <laughs> right? And I, I love books, I love mm -hmm. story, so I, I, I don't know, I just, I'm like, no, my, and I want that for my kids, I want them to okay. experience that. So I wrote a book called La Che La Pain, Okay. and it's about um, Copia La Pain and how he lost, how his tail got shot. Okay. <laughs> and um, so that is, it's just a, a fun story, but mm -hmm. I wanted Creole featured. I didn't want it to be an English um, right. story because I think I feel like we don't even know our own Creole, and some most people don't know how to read it. Most people mm -hmm. don't know how to spell. Right. And yeah. so I, I figured if it was a children's book and it's bilingual, they can make that. Okay. Relation. So it's almost like teaching the Creole. Yes. In, in the book. Yes, in the book. Okay, so then how do you mentally make space for a project like that? Mentally, how do you mentally make space? Mm -hmm. I mean, with work, with the cards, and to write a story, right. it's, it takes time. It takes time, yes. Um, let's see. From, I, I honestly, some, some of the things I can tell you, I don't feel like I do them. I, right. I feel like I'm, again, a channel. That, mm -hmm. you know, God is saying, oh, well, I really want this into the world. So I need you to do it. Because right. there are times for that story, it nagged me mm -hmm. for years, mm -hmm. literally years. I like, always had that story. And like every time I think it, I, I'm like, okay, it's gone. Mm -hmm. it, keep, it comes back. And I'm right. like, okay, I well, have to put it down. I yes. just need to do it. And there are several other, other stories that I want to work on. And that's what it is. It's mm -hmm. nagging. It's mm -hmm. like, you have to do this. Yes. You must put so it down. So you're just a channel. Yes. Okay. So I'm not, even with the cards, there are times mm -hmm. when I have to make a card and I have 
no clue <laughs> what I'm going to make. Yeah. I'm like, how am I going to do that? I, know, I think I'm going to tell the person I can't do that. Right. And I sit down and it mm -hmm. comes. I'm like, okay, right. well, let me. And I, I kid you not, every time I do it, I'm like, thank you, God. All right. <laughs> yes. That was all you, You're not right. me. <laughs> because yes. we were having that conversation with our last guest, mm -hmm. Ross, and we were speaking about that, and mm -hmm. it's almost like, that this is the closest you can get to God, being mm -hmm. a creative person, and that yes. we're blessed and highly favored because <laughs> we are his favorites, you know? Yeah. I, th I okay. think it's, it's yeah. important to, to recognize that, that it's not you doing, I, well, mm -hmm. I don't think that it's you doing the work. It's right, exactly. you be your channel you're for, a channel work, for yeah. it. So are there other like-minded persons like yourself who are the scientists and the artists? I would imagine it's sort of a small community, I think but so. have you found your tribe? Have you found those people who... My tribe is diverse. It's okay. not a... Specific to just... No, I think, I think I need that too because I am... There's always, I think every artist has a little crazy. Mm, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, we know and that. And you need people to ground you. So a lot of the people around me ground me. Mm -hmm. They're the persons, they're the more logical people. Like my husband is a totally logical person. I would think you would be quite log very logical. Logical, <laughs> scientifically. Okay. But otherwise, when the artist, I think I'm, I'm, the artist comes out, I am dominated by the artist okay. or anything um, and in my personality for sure mm -hmm. so I am um, a lot of the people in my life are very logical people they mm -hmm. tend to ground me and say okay and guide me in that sense okay. and I have a very small a small circle, um, circle yes mm -hmm. so so it's important to find for you those grounding people or people who are like-minded such as yourself do you look for both Mm. Well, not that look, I guess they come into yours. Yes, I think I think I attract them for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> I'm a specific kind of person right. who I tend to attract. I'm like, how did you get here? <laughs> I guess it's the same with the spiritual elements of yeah. like, you know, it gets downloaded into you. Mm -hmm. The people around you is the same. Yep. The same I think the so. same thing. Yep. Um so do you have somebody that you look to for guidance, a mentor? Even if it's in your work as a scientist, your work as an artist, is there somebody that you found as a mentor that um, you've looked to? I found a mentor for quality. Okay. And that's Miss Betty Combi. She is okay. amazing. Mm. Yes. <laughs> in terms of science, I don't, I can't, I think, I always say this and it might seem strange, but I think my mentor is a fictional character was Nancy Drew, <laughs> okay. right? Because um, that is where mm -hmm. the love for science came from nice. and cu being curious and this whole detective-like um, thought process. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of art, I am... Um, I do, I do think I have one person that I look right. to. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's take a look at mm -hmm. some of Joy's work. We're going to take a look at some photos right now. Okay. Let's, can we roll that, Roger? Thanks. <laughs>
Okay, so that was Joy's work. Um, and really, really amazing stuff, Joy. Thank you. And so if you want to see more of Joy's work or if you're interested in getting some a card from her, you can, these are handles and you can log on. So, so Joy, tell me, what advice would you have for someone who is in the uncommon position of having this love for art and for science? Mm -hmm. What kind of advice would you give to them? Because yeah. it's not many people, I would think, unless there are and I don't know. Maybe. Um, for, for me, how I would answer that is not necessarily just for science and art, but just in general. When I was younger, um, I think still now a lot of the advice is just to focus on one thing, stick to that. Mm -hmm. And what I've recognized is that I can't just stick to that one thing. I need to make that shift. Mm -hmm. And so for persons who have that experience, because I think a lot of people probably do, mm. and just feel like something's wrong with them because I felt like something was wrong mm. with me. <laughs> like, it's, do you think people said like, okay, she can't focus, she can't, yes. like, I was, in I was school. always too restless okay. in school. My mom always said, Joy, you need to focus, right. um, settle down. Um, I was always a very restless person. Mm -hmm. And I think that what is, what's important is for you to recognize what you're good at, recognize what your strengths are, recognize what you love, mm -hmm. and go after that. Stop. Um, putting a, yourself in a box and mm -hmm. trying to figure, okay, this is what I have to do, mm -hmm. but really step out and take control of what you all, you know, really take charge of what you love mm -hmm. and what you like and Mm -hmm. and do that that's what I when I heard the term multi-passionate I was like yes okay that's me that's me I mm -hmm. like that and I'm gonna just grab hold of that and stick to that right yeah. so then how does one achieve excellence in their chosen field do you think there's a specific formula like mm -hmm. in terms of like your science and all is there a specific formula a bit of this a bit of that what is it do you think in terms of achieving excellence, excellence. In terms of excellence, for me, excellence is giving your best. Mm -hmm. And I got that from my mom from very young. I was always told, no matter what you are going to be, mm -hmm. give your best. You can be someone picking up garbage on the road. You can be mm -hmm. somebody walking a dog. You can right. be a teacher, a doctor. Just give your best. And for me, that is what excellence is. You, whatever you do. Mm -hmm. Put your best into it. Don't do it ha in, in a half, um, like half. Don't give half. Mm -hmm. For me, and, and I struggle with this in mm -hmm. all areas of my life because I'm an all or nothing kind of person. I give my mm -hmm. all. And it, it, it affects a lot of, of who I am. So, mm -hmm. for example, in my work, sometimes I don't know when to stop right. and say, okay, Joy, you've done enough mm -hmm. and you don't have mm -hmm. to, you don't know. You have to keep picking at picking it. At it. Um, mm -hmm. And I think for, for me, that's where quality has helped me because mm -hmm. um, I've recognized that it's all about improvement. It's all mm -hmm. about um, progress instead of mm -hmm. trying to make it perfect. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just always making it better every mm -hmm. time. So how do you know when you hit the mark? Because if you're making a cut, how do you know when you hit the mark? For art, for, mm -hmm. well, it comes naturally for me, mm -hmm. for art. I, I know if I put anything more on something, oh, that's too much. Right. For, for everything else, it's um, that's not tangible. Okay. Is where I kind of lose focus. I have to stop myself. Well, that's right. where the people that you spoke about help right. me. They ground okay. me. They're like, hey, you've done enough. You don't mm -hmm. have to do any more than this. So um, mm. that all or nothing kind of thing, kind of, mm -hmm. it's a good and a bad thing. Right. <laughs> yes. Because I, the question I ask about the, my guest is, do you think that we settle, we settle in this country? Do you think that we settle for mediocre? Like people think their first draft is their final draft. You know that kind of thing? Mm -hmm. Have you had that feeling that you see something, it's like, no, this person, do you think you're a little judgmental on that area? I'm always <laughs> judgmental. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel I am right, judgmental, right. yes. But, but generally, um, is that your experience that you think that people are settling for mediocre? Like mm -hmm. I can see where you can push more and mm -hmm. you're settling in this... I, I don't think that they're settling for mediocre. I just feel like, for me, sometimes I wish we had that, um, what's the word? Not standard, but I mm -hmm. wish we had more pride. Okay. I feel like we don't have, when I think of, and I say this a lot, when I think of Jamaica, 
-hmm. or Trinidad or Barbados, they have this pride that you can't talk about. Right. Like, you know, you talk about, your, and you say anything bad and right. they're at you, right? right? And they, they have the, you just meet them and they just have that sense of pride. I, mm -hmm. I honestly don't think that we have that. It's not okay. a knock, I'm not trying to knock anybody, right. but we don't have the national pride that um, being a St. Lucian and this is who I am. And, mm -hmm. and for me, that is where we're lacking. But in terms of... Um, giving and doing the mm. St. Lucia has so much to offer. I, I've mm. met loads of people in the arts in other areas. I'm like, wow, like this exists and right. nobody knows about it. And so for me, that is where I feel that we can do better. And if we okay. instill that pride or if we recognize all mm -hmm. of this wealth that we have, we probably would, you mm -hmm. know, and cultivate that pride in our people. How do you think we could reckon? How do you think it is this something that can be taught? How, how can one recognize what we have? And um, I don't know if it's something that can be taught. I think it's just not out there enough. Okay. I feel like it's still, um, people still have everything like, oh, well, yeah. Right. This is, this is, this is it. Or this is all it's, I yeah. It's not an unapologetic. This right. Is it. this, it's not. I don't okay. feel like it's, like you, and I'm, I'm, I, t I make this example a lot. Jamaicans, mm -hmm. they don't apologize for who they are. They're <laughs> right. like, this is me. This is, they put their green and their gold and that mm -hmm. is it. Mm -hmm. You don't see that with, well, for me, I don't see that with solutions. I'm okay. like, on Independence Day, we do this. On National Day, we do this. But it's not, Je ne yes, it's not unapologetic. This is me, take it or leave it and right yeah i do feel like we have that so for me that is where we're lacking mm -hmm. okay yeah. so is do you have an ultimate goal is there an ultimate goal for you that when you when you get to that point then you can say not just i have arrived but mm -hmm. i no longer need to pick at this this is it you know it's like <laughs> quality assured right i have arrived do you see do you have an ultimate goal of something and what what will what is that thing when you get to it that you'll know i am satisfied with that um funny enough i know how to answer this question and i don't know how to answer this question <laughs> because i am a person who is very purpose driven i am okay. not my my family and my husband always laughs they're like we, i don't understand how you're not i'm not fueled by wealth or okay. like I do like I don't necessarily need material things um, and I'm always confusing them like <laughs> hmm. but like I said at the end for me when I can give back or mm -hmm. for, for example one of the reasons why I love my job so much especially when I know okay this victim got justice or mm -hmm. this family got justice I kid you not if I get that that information at mm -hmm. 9 a.m. or 8 a.m. it's made your day that whole day you can throw anything at me and my day is made you cannot take that away so for me I don't think there's anything tangible like right there's nothing tangible for me it's mm -hmm. really a feeling a purpose that right. I feel like if I once that is met I'm mm -hmm. good so it's a continuous thing Yes, Continue. even with the cards, um, I make the cards and what brings me the most joy is hearing somebody had a great like experience, experience with them. Right. I remember I made this card, um, it was a makeup, I was told the person is very girly and they wanted right. something, you know, really girly. So I made a, a, a card that looked like a makeup palette. Okay. And when the, the recipient got it, she was like, literally touching it thinking <laughs> that it was yeah, makeup it color right right and and that alone i was like really right. and she was like oh my god she really loved the card and i'm like a card did that great and right. so yeah so for me that is what sparks everything for me it's not necessarily putting the work out there and recognition or money mm -hmm. or anything like that for okay. me that's yeah okay nice so have you ever like anybody ever said can you teach me how to do this have you ever mentored or i have ha I've, I've done a class um but it's a couple of years ago mm -hmm. but i like 
nobody has ever said, oh, I need to learn how to right, do this. And right. I would love to teach it. I have no problem so you'll teaching hear that. it. Um, <laughs> so I would love to teach. I would love to <laughs> teach it and um, get people understanding how they're made. Yeah. Okay. So is there anything, I mean, we? I feel like we've covered most aspects. Mm -hmm. um, what, because, okay, there is something, Beauty Queen, mm -hmm. how did that one come into the mix because you're the author, the artist, the scientist. Mm -hmm. And how did Beauty Queen get into this? You were Miss World, um, our yes. Miss World representative. Yes, in 2005, I represented Saint Lucia um, for Miss World. That is a good story. That one, <laughs> um, I think that was fueled um, from my need to become a scientist. And okay. I think if, when I think about my journey, a lot of what I do, even if it's unconscious, mm -hmm. it's purpose yes, it, it's purpose driven. So um, I can tell you that I was a total tomboy, total. Mm -hmm. I've never been a diva. I've never <laughs> been until now. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been that person, and. Right. Um, when they made that casting call, they were like, you know, and, and the, the prize for that was a scholarship mm. in France. Oh, and wow. I was like, ooh, I want that. Right. That is what I want. And I'm getting it. And I remember meeting all of the other girls and I was quite intimidated. I'm like, whoa, <laughs> okay, I need to mm. learn how to do this and that. Um, but... I think once I've set my mind on something, that's it. That's it. And I'm going to do whatever right. it is and I'm going to okay. get it. Yeah, that's great. That's so that so you went to school in France. What was that like? So and were your classes, first of all, you did it all French. You did molecular biology. Biology, oui. biology molecular. And en français. Oui. biochemistry in French. <laughs> en français, yes. So you had to learn French first, or did you already know some I French? did French for CXC. I did French and Spanish for CXC. Okay. Um, but that was it. That has that that was my baseline for French. I mean, my brain, my brain hurts. <laughs> <laughs> my brain literally hurts. I am hurts very adventurous. About, so. <laughs> <laughs> thinking about the stuff Joy yes. is doing. Yes. Um, so what was that to to learn this scientific? It's it's not method. that different. Okay. It's not that different. Um, and that's what's great about science. I mean, mm -hmm. if you think about. Um, how we categorize species. Remember mm -hmm. that um, we have a, a, a name for any animal mm -hmm. so that it could be recognized on an international scale. So science is, is I mean, yes, you have to learn the language okay. and, and apply it, but it's mm -hmm. not so different. So you think the science is a language of its own? Yes, I feel like that. Okay. And so it's not, it wasn't, I mean, it was scary. It mm -hmm. was a new culture, but it's a beautiful culture. Mm -hmm. And I'm very, Adventurous. I, I like new things. I right. want to try new things. Let's see something new. Let's right. you know. So it 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 was something that I was I was willing to try mm -hmm. and do. And it's I like experiences more than anything else. Mm -hmm. Like I said, yeah. material things are not. I rather the experience. So mm -hmm. that was an excellent yeah. experience. Did, even did it the, right? Okay. Even in the beauty pageant, that was mm -hmm. an experience on its own. And that is something that I was like, oh, okay, All I'll right. take that from it. All right. <laughs> yeah. So what was that like? So what advice would you have for Tyler? Because we have Tyler Theofan, mm -hmm. she's our Miss Wool representative. Right. So what kind of advice would you give to her when she gets there with the other girls at the pageant? Have fun. That's just yes. basically it. Have fun, enjoy it, represent the country. And really, uh, you don't take it too seriously mm -hmm. in terms of not that you don't give your best, mm -hmm. as in don't take yourself right. too seriously. And um, just really enjoy the journey because you learn so much. And that's something mm -hmm. I, I tell a lot of people when they say they want to do pageantry. It's, for me, it was a learning mm -hmm. experience. It, was, okay. it really taught me a lot about myself. Like I said, I was a tomboy. I, was, mm -hmm. I didn't understand how wonderful it was to be a woman to be a you know right. to be feminine and that journey gave me a lot of confidence it taught me about myself what my strengths were mm -hmm. and that you need to just be open mm -hmm. with everything and really enjoy okay enjoy was that journey. your only um beauty pageant it was my only okay. beauty pageant because i had the goal in right mind. so you got what you wanted <laughs> so if another one comes up you'll be like okay so that's how i'm gonna get this so. <laughs> okay. 
Okay. Yes, I wasn't. I was. I've never been somebody who loved the spotlight. I mm -hmm. like to be in the background. I like right. to work in the background. You don't necessarily know my name. Right, right. <laughs> but yeah, for for the purpose, mm -hmm. I, I yeah. Very interesting mm -hmm. story about that because most people will say probably from young they were into the beauty pageants no. and modeling and so on. Not but it's all. like, no, okay. The goal. Forensic the goal. scientists, make sure I do science, make sure I do forensics. And that right. was the avenue. All right. So the, as I said in the intro, you were, you were a beauty queen. Mm -hmm. And I mentioned you were a mother. Yes. So what is that like? Because that, that is really brings up balance yes I mean mm -hmm. where do you get the time to be a mother to two boys yes you said? two boys wow. um, there is no time no. everything their whole all the time is there all your time is theirs um, mm -hmm. but what motherhood has taught me I think motherhood is a journey on itself and it teaches me about myself mm -hmm. more than anything um, my boys have taught me so much um, mm -hmm. they've taught me how to chill they mm -hmm. taught me how to have fun have patience yes patience <laughs> sometimes i'm like how how where how do you do this all sometimes i'm like why again did we decide that we needed to work as women why huh? right right but it's a lot um but when i first became a mother mm -hmm. i remember telling my mom i now finally understand God's love. I finally get it. Um, you know, it was very abstract. People mm -hmm. would say, um, you know, God loves us unconditionally. And I'm like, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, he loves us unconditionally. But, you know, you never really you had nothing to right, compare, con compare yeah. to. And I feel like that is what they gave me, that connection. Mm -hmm. Because uh, having a child, being a mother, and just being able, having to take care of that person and knowing mm -hmm. that no matter what, you have that like they could do anything and you will love them mm -hmm. I mean you don't like the things they do right but you love them yes. and I could not understand that until I became a mother is you right. know you do something bad and you're like, like how you can like that right, right right but then you're like no it's just unconditional you mm -hmm. just yeah. uh, just the appreciate purest and, love yes is it really is. Yeah. So would you say your faith, because you speak out about God mm -hmm. and and even like, I would say your motivation, mm -hmm. but what helps you, even when there is nothing, what mm -hmm. else when you speak again about the love, um, do you find it's a driving factor in all aspects of your life? Faith, um, are you a religious person or you would say that you just have a, you feel that you do have I'm a connected. connection? Yes, I'm not a religious person, but mm -hmm. I am definitely, I, I believe that there is mm -hmm. a, higher a higher power. And what's interesting is that this is interesting. Mm -hmm. um, thanks for that question. Um, <laughs> in in, when I studied, especially in France, you think France is this really religious country, right? Mm -hmm. And there are lots of Catholics. But when, I, when you study science, a lot of scientists are not, um, they're either atheists or they don't believe in a higher power. But mm -hmm. um, I tell people a lot, my science has grounded my faith. There is, you, you, no scientist can explain to you how mm -hmm. the heart starts beating. Right. Okay? They know that it's an electrical impulse, right. it starts. But at four weeks, it starts. Yes. They don't know what triggers it. They don't mm. know what it is. And there's so many different things that we are still exploring, that we're still trying to find out. Mm -hmm. And for me, that is what grounds it. It's like, there must be a higher power. It, we didn't do this. It mm -hmm. has to happen. And even with art. so. For me, that is, again, another intersection for mm -hmm. art, too, beauty. And just sometimes I sit and I just see the sunset and I'm like, mm -hmm. my God, yes. that is majestic. Like, right. wow. You know, and that's why everybody's trying to capture, right. a, you know, yeah. a picture or yeah. paint a sunset because of how beautiful it is. And for me, there must be right. a higher power. It cannot be that this yes. just happened. And he is creative, or she is creative, you know? Yeah. It's there. Yep. Right, this is such a, well, I think this might be a great place to end. <laughs> yes. On that note, the higher power. The higher power. And um, so thank you so much, Joy. This was a really enlightening 
um, experience this mm -hmm. this interview mm -hmm. because when you think of the scientist you do not think that the scientist you know is an artist is an artist <laughs> because it just thinks and I think very special because mm -hmm. I don't think many people can be both. that okay. so thank you so much for being thank our guest mm -hmm. and guys thank you so much for um, joining us for another episode of creative excellence and my guest joy Quinlan Thank you, Thank guys. You.